Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out the Water Drop G2. So this is a water filter system that goes under your sink and it's a reverse osmosis. And the reason we got this is because we got tired of buying bottled water and wanted clean tap water out of the sink. So Water Drop has a few models. This is the G2. They also have a G3 which is a little bit larger and it actually has a few more features. But the G2 here is a really good value for what you get. So the box is quite large. And and it did ship just like this in its original packaging. So here we have some information. There we have the model number. That's what the filters look like. And it does come with a faucet. So it does have an automatic notification system that tracks the life of your filters that are five stage filtration and eliminate 1000 plus contaminants. Eco-friendly for low consumption of the waste so we have the different types of filters and the reverse osmosis filter here reduces 90% of solids like heavy metals, lead, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, and a thousand more contaminants. So yeah, this is quite a high quality filtration system and it'll definitely make anybody's tap water safe for consumption in drinking or cooking or whatever else that you need clean water for. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. So it looks like we have a box here that greets us, faucet and accessory kit. And then we have the filter itself. So it looks like we can just turn the box upside down and pull it out. So that's all that's in the box. So you guys, as you saw, very nicely packed. And there's a label here, we can see all the specifications. So the feed water pressure is 14 to 87 PSI. The maximum water pressure is 100. And feed water temperature shouldn't be less than 41 or more than 100. And this is the back of the machine. We have a power cord that comes out on the bottom. And this does require power, so if you don't have an outlet under your sink, you might have to run an extension cord or get power there if you want to have a system like this. All right. Very nice logo here, water drop, and a very clean machine. And now they do have them in two different colors. They have it in this white, and they also have a black one if you wanted a darker one. But the filters still stay white, these circle parts. So on the bottom of the machine, we have nice squishy rubber feet. So that keeps it from moving around. And the whole thing is recessed off the bottom here, so you can see. So it's got a little air gap. So quite a straightforward looking filter. It is a good size, but compared to the other kind of brands that you have with reverse osmosis, you have a lot more stuff, especially the tank. This thing does not require a tank. And that's a big deal, especially, you know, if you want a more cleaner design with a lot less space taken. So on the top here, on the back, we have the entrance port. So here we have the waste, then we have the water inlet, and here we have to the faucet. So at the front of the machine, we have some information panel here and this looks like it might be a button here that's touch capacitive so we have indicators here for certain functions I'll have to look up what those mean but I'm guessing this is power this is the filter down here and then I guess that's carbon filter here that looks like a water flow indicator yeah let's go ahead and see if we can get these filters out okay so that comes out actually quite easy all right and so that's how the filter comes out and it's quite a decent size but this is, looks like a smaller one pre-sediment and carbon block filter and there's a model number for replacements all right well, that's pretty cool so i think this filter you need to replace once a year but the good part is, is the machine knows so it will indicate when to replace it and then here we have the more serious filter which is the reverse osmosis filter and this guy is quite large and I guess that's what the MRO stands for is multiple reverse osmosis filter. And that is the model number for that. So this filter here can probably have a longer interval, but again, the machine will let us know when it's ready. That's what it looks like inside the port there. So we just have a connection and there's rubber gaskets that seal the system. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in and it just goes in sideways and then just locks right in. A very simple and easy way to make a filtration system. All right, so let's see what's inside this faucet and accessory kit box. So we do have the manual, which we'll probably need to look at a few things. So we got hoses. Okay, so this is the main water line hose. Then we have the waste connector. So this is where our waste tube will go out to the drain pipe. And this appears to be like maybe some kind of tape or Teflon tape maybe. And there's a couple of those. Some clips and these are spacers that we'll be putting right underneath these couplers here. So you can see when this raises, it actually locks the hose in there. So these little clips will go right under there and it will raise them. And these are hard hoses. So this is a waste hose, which is the red one. And the faucet hose is a smaller white one. And here it looks like we still have 
the faucet itself left. So we'll get a little template of how big the hole needs to be drilled. So it's a sticker that you peel off and then you can drill that hole or just trace it. And it's a pretty nice design. It's a brushed, I guess kind of like a stainless steel look. So the upper portion here we'll just clip in there and then our white hose will actually go at the end of this. All right, so we're gonna go step by step of how to connect this thing. And hopefully you guys can see that it's not hard and you can definitely do it yourself quite easily. All right, so this is what we look like under the sink. So I'm either gonna put the unit on this side if I can fit it, or if it's not, then on that side. I'm gonna go ahead and see if it does fit in this little corner here. And look at that, it actually fits in there perfectly and the door closes. So it actually turned out good for me because I can still have all the space for other things. Alright guys, so we're looking at the manual here and these are all the parts that we should have that we've seen. So here it kind of shows us what goes where and we have a little diagram kind of see the overall way that this thing goes together. So here we have some tips. Apparently they have the hoses marked and you got to make sure the mark goes all the way in. So what they're saying is make sure you go all the way in, in the coupler because if you don't you might have trouble and leakages. And also if your tubing is way too long you can cut it. I'm going to try not to cut mine but just coil it if it's too long so I guess you do have a choice if you wanted to all right so here we have step one which is installing the main water adapter and that's this guy here and so what this thing is is just a T that goes into your existing system the water flowing to where it was and then also uses it for itself and so under the sink you should have two hoses a hot one and a cold one and what you're gonna do is you're gonna shut off the cold one figure out which one is which and then we're gonna undo this hose here and then put this adapter on and on the other end of the adapter the hose back on that alright so the adapter is installed and it's not very hard as you guys can see the original hose is on the very top and the adapter is connected straight to that line there and then we have the output that goes out kinda of coils around and the end of it will go right in the middle right here so I'm just going to kind of quill my hoses up there. And so they have a mark here on the hose and you want to make sure that the hose goes all the way down past the mark. So kind of massage it in there, push it in. So it looks like it went all the way down. And out of our clips here, we're going to grab the bigger one and we're going to try to install it underneath the coupler there. So just like that. Now hopefully you can see that, but that's how it goes right there. And what that does is it locks it in where it doesn't pull out. All right, so for step two, they want us to install the faucet. So the faucet has a little gasket here, and hopefully it fits right over this hole. It's gonna go something like this, and then we got the rest of the hardware that we need to install it. Now, we can go ahead and start the nut, and the reason for that is because this washer here has got an open end so it can go in underneath and then clamp in from underneath the sink. So we can go ahead and put these accessories on here. And here we have a quick connect fitting and that's also going to go on the end of the input side here on the faucet. So we're just going to clamp it on there just like that. Now here we also want to use these little clips. Everything that has a quick connect like this needs a clip just like that so it guarantees that it's not going to just pop out. Because now it can't come out. It can kind of move around but it can't come out. So later when we plug our hose in or we can actually plug the hose now in and then feed it down. But either way we're also going to put a clip in here. So we're going to just set this in the sink and then under the sink we're going to put this in there and then we're going to clamp it. And actually guys I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. So you want to push it in until this black line here is all the way in. And then we're going to take our little clip. And we're going to install that and now this is nice and tight. So now we can feed the other end into the hole and our faucet will go in just like that. So now we're going to need to go underneath the sink with this washer. It's really guys hard for me to show you but this washer we're going to put in there and then clamp it down. And just like that you guys can see I got it nice and tight and the washer is in there. And this is what it looks like on the other side so it's nice and sturdy and we should be able to use this. Okay so it goes up and down like this. So now we can install this other piece which is the actual faucet and it looks like it just clips in has some rubber gaskets there. So let's massage it in there. And just like that, we have our faucet. And this can swivel back and forth, which is nice because if you wanna, you know, fill something up on the side, you can do that. So all right, so same thing here for the faucet. We're gonna go to the one that says F, not the W, but the F for faucet. And same way, we're just gonna plug it in. We'll go all the way down to the line. And then we're gonna raise it just a little so we can get our clip under our technically you don't really have to raise it. It's going to pull up on the coupling just a little bit and it'll fit the clip in. So let's grab a clip, squeeze it in there. And just like that, we are good. And I coiled up all my hoses up there so they're not going to be in the way. And the reason I'm doing that instead of cutting them, you could cut them if you want. I'd recommend not cutting it because just in case you want to move this later or whatnot else, you always have longer hoses. All right, so we're making really good progress. We got one more thing to install. And that is step three, the drain hose or saddle or whatever they call it. So it's this apparatus thing. And what this does 
is it's going to go around our waste tube and you will have to drill a hole. So on mine here, because I have this, I can go either here or a little lower. I do have already another drain here. These are for actually the, the dishwashers, but technically doesn't really matter. But you will need a quarter inch drill bit for this project. So unfortunately they didn't give you any way to drill a hole yourself, but it would have been nice if they included something because, you know, normally you're just drilling out some plastic, which is quite simple. So I think I'm going to go ahead and mount mine up here somewhere. So I'm going to drill the hole. I'm going to try to point it more where it's heading towards the back there. So I'm going to kind of do that from there. Alright, so I got my hole right here. So we're going to take this bracket apart and we're going to take this red hose and stick one end. I do have to take this clip out first. There's a clip already in here. We're just going to stick it in there and we want it to come out just a little bit, about this much. So there is a pad right around here and that will keep anything from leaking anywhere. And I went ahead and put my clip back on. And so the tip of our red hose is simply just going to go into the hole that we drilled, just like that. And then the back side of the bracket will just connect right there. Basically like this, so we're just going to clamp it down right here. Alright, and this is what it looks like once it's all clamped. So it's nice and tight in there. And so our waste will drain into our main drain. And so the other end of the red hose, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did earlier. Just plug it right in. Make sure it goes deep enough, so push all the way down. And the black line should disappear. And then we're going to put another clip in there. Just like that. And we are done. So as you can see guys, that was not very hard at all to install. This is what I really like about the system is that it's quite straightforward and not confusing at all. And you're really dealing with just three hoses. So here we have the power cord and it looks like it's about four feet or so. Now the issue that I do have is that I don't have a plug here anywhere. So I am going to have to run a little extension cord for now. All right, so the last thing to do is we need to open the main water and check, make sure we don't have any kind of leaks anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that. All right, so, so far it's looking good. Appears to be nothing leaking anywhere. So let's go ahead and connect our power. Okay, looks like we got some lights here. Go ahead and start running actually. I guess it's going through the filters and building pressure. All right, so it stopped running. Yeah, it looks like everything's okay and we don't have any leaks. So let's go to our faucet and try it out, see if it works. A lot of air came out. Okay, oh yeah, that's, that was pretty dirty. I guess that's the filters. Probably had some contamination in them. But I think it's a good idea to run this thing for a little bit to clean it out. So when you do run the faucet, it runs the pump inside and creates the pressure because it does need quite a bit of pressure to go through the filtration. And this is why you need the power so it can build pressure to filter it correctly. So here's a little guide that tells you what everything means on the display. So blue light means everything is normal. Purple light means that we're starting to get close to needing replacement and red replace now. So that's their indicators for the filters. So here it kind of shows you a little diagram of what that looks like. And it will make a beep two times when it's replaced soon and it'll keep beeping when it needs to be replaced immediately. So in here it kind of tells us how to replace the filters and then how to reset the filter life by holding this button right here. Alright, so everything else is, you know, some more information and pretty straightforward I would say. So we've been running the water for a little bit here and I think I want to go ahead and keep running it for a little bit more. We're going to go under here we're going to check again make sure we don't have any kind of leaks anywhere and it all looks good. Now when you do go to replace these filters, you do want to shut off your water. You can either do it on your main one or you have a little, little one just dedicated for the filter. So you have a little valve there for that. And obviously you probably want to unplug the machine also just in case. So yeah guys, overall it's quite simple and I'm really happy with it here initially. The only thing I have left to do is bring some power to it and that'll be it for installing it. And I'm quite happy with how everything went together. It's quite simple and straightforward. And just a great option for sure if you don't want to mess with the old style, you know, tank and all that other stuff because that takes up so much more space and for me it's quite important that I'm able to disconnect this thing and take it with me later down the road when I'm going to be moving. So yeah guys overall big thumbs up for this water drop G2. I think it's worth it for the price that it's going for it's definitely offering a lot more convenience and ease of installation compared to a traditional reverse osmosis system. So if you've been wanting to get a water filter this is an excellent option. So if you're interested in this I'm going to have some links in the description check that out and if this video was useful to you hit that like button. And if you like videos like this, I do a lot of interesting things on this channel. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button to see more. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.